Hello, welcome to Mongo Bay, uh, Mongo Bay India interviews. Uh, the southern Indian city of Chennai is once again flooded. There are reports of heavy rains uh, and, and further rains last night and uh, uh, Chennai is uh, preparing uh, to face the situation, uh, perhaps the kind of situation it faced in December 2015. Uh, so as Chennai prepares, I have with me uh, Dr. Jayashree Venkateshan. Uh, she's the managing trustee of the Care Earth Trust, an organization which has been working uh, for many years uh, as to, to give scientific studies and uh, to help conserve uh, the wetlands of uh, Chennai. Uh, and uh, through through the action of uh, Care Earth Trust, the Pallikarne Marsh, which is the, which is the biggest uh, uh, water body uh, in Chennai and considered the the, 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 the final sponge of the Chennai city uh, uh, was, was declared as a protected area in 2007. Uh, welcome, uh, welcome to Mongo Bay India interview, uh, Jayashi. So nice to have you here. Likewise, thank you. Jayashi, uh, how is it now? Uh, how, what is happening in uh, Chennai now? How is it? Okay, the, most parts of Chennai are waterlogged. Some parts are flooded. It's certainly not at, at a place where we can say it's a repeat of 2015, but the flooding this time has been quite unexpected and intense in some parts of the city. How is it different from 2015 or uh, uh, is it, I mean, is there a sense of deja vu also you feel? There is a sense of deja vu. Certainly there is a sense of deja vu because it's the same areas that are getting repeatedly waterlogged or flooded. But at the same time, it's slightly distinct from 2015 because the kind of rapidness with which the 2015 deluge happened is not being seen this time around. Uh, do you think, uh, uh, I mean, this early November showers this year is, is like the early no November showers of uh, uh, 2015 because uh, 2015 actually uh, to the same date, you know, November 8th, we had heavy showers. And then there were bouts afterwards. We had... Uh, bouts in uh, you know, roundabouts of November 14, 15, then 20, 22nd. And by the time the big flooding happened on December 1st to 5th, uh, I mean, we had gone through, that was the fifth episode. So do you, I mean, are you scared that, I mean, even if you, even if the city were to cross this one uh, fairly easily, uh, future events coming in the next months can cause problems? It certainly is. Yes. Whenever the Chennai experiences flooding, this is the pattern that's witnessed early onset of monsoon and then repeated recurrent uh, bouts of intense rainfall with intermittent breaks. And then by the time the fourth or the fifth uh, spell comes in, the soil is saturated, the reservoirs are full and all the channels which are blocked continue to be blocked. And so the deluge happens. This is the pattern that's so typical of Chennai. And sometime around December is when we, I'm, I mean, I, I hope that doesn't happen, but that's when we have to be really worried. Uh, Jeshi, you have also done uh long-term uh, analysis, uh, I've been trying to understand what is the cyclical nature uh, of uh, floods and droughts in Chennai. Uh, so it's been six years after 2015. Uh, in, in, that, in that average cycle, cyclical periodicity, uh, do you think 2021 could be a, a bad year? There is a distinct change, actually. You know, earlier, we've been tracking uh, uh, floods and waterlogging of Chennai since 2005. That's the reference year that we have uh, in terms of research studies. But we looked into a 200-year-old data, and we noticed that in the past, it was a kind of a decadal episode. Every 10 years, the city experienced floods. But this time around, that window has been shortened. Within the six-year framework that we've got this kind of an intense rainfall uh, episode. So in that sense, there is some change, but what is very striking and very noticeable is since 2002, there have been these extreme rainfall days and that pattern has remained more or less consistent. So if you really have to look for a kind of a near where there has been a drastic change to the character of Chennai's monsoon, it's 2002. Oh. So, uh, I mean, between 2015 and today, uh, we also had the uh, IPCC AR6, at least the first uh, working group report. And that does talk about uh, increasing uh, intensity and frequency of extreme weather events in uh, in South Asian region. I mean, it doesn't talk specifically about Tamil Nadu, but in South Asian region. So uh, do, you, uh, 
do you see any linkages with uh, i mean with that trend that's what it seems like although there is no ground data to substantiate whatever is being said but i am very sure that it's a kind of a combination of factors we cannot certainly look for linear kind of association it's a combination of factors but chennai still continues to manage its water rather poorly so that is in fact intensifying the impact of already happening thing uh jashi uh, we, we have you have to, uh, talked about this to me earlier uh, you have you you have this very i mean i i, I like that example very ex- appropriate metaphor of a wet towel uh, a wet towel uh, you say any housewife knows that a wet towel draws more water than a dry towel and you have been a field ecologist for more than 3 decades now working in chennai and and the other areas but certainly a lot of uh, intense work in chennai uh, how I mean, how do you see the uh, the trend in in the in the loss of wetlands uh, uh, in the built up space and loss of forests etc because you also worked in forests over the past decades and how it is sort of adding to events like this okay if one were to describe chennai it exists in three layers what is mon- normally referred to as the gcc area the greater chennai corporation area is a small core area of about 400 square kilometers and then you have the cma area which is the chennai metropolitan area that runs to about 1300 1030 square kilometers and then you have this large neighborhood area which is what is being proposed as the mega city area that runs to about 8800 square kilometers if you really look at what's happening in all these three units the core of the city which is this 400 plus area seems to be saturated with all intervention so it's staying stable but the ma- maximum amount of manipulation in terms of loss of wetland loss of green cover loss of forest is happening in this 1100 square kilometer area the buffer area in other words the suburbs are losing out on the natural entities especially wetlands because that's where habitations are coming up chennai cannot expand north you know because we are bound by andhra pradesh less than 80 kilometers from the core of the city so it has to expand south and southwest and that's where most of the wetlands are located as cascading systems and those are the ones that are being converted as habitations primarily because most of these wetlands have not been enumerated while the lakes have been enumerated the big reservoirs have been enumerated and the boundaries fixed those that are small and those that are part of a cascading system have not been looked into there has not been a survey since 1987 so they are the ones which are being lost and when i say lost it means total loss as well as bad fragmentation as well they just are being compromised so in all there is a big loss likewise chennai also has a kind of a network of areas under the reserve forest category which is about 18 in number those stay stable but all the orchards the paddy areas these are all areas that are losing their character and very soon becoming habitations or they are subject to speculative buying so it's left barren and left unused it's losing the city is losing its wet character you summed it up right it's losing the character to handle water yeah i mean the character to handle 1400 mm of rainfall uh, every year which is not not exactly dry you know it's certainly not dry but i don't know from where this myth came in chennai has always planned itself as a dry city although if you really look at uh, precipitation data for the last 220 years it stayed more or less consistent at 1428 mm annual average rainfall but it's still being planned as a city that uh, can handle only 300 mm of annual rainfall 300 to 400 mm. so what you're saying in in terms of planning uh, people think chennai is coimbatore whereas uh, chennai is not not certainly coimbatore Chen- chennai is not even hyderabad it's more than even hyderabad's uh, uh, annual rainfall yeah annual yeah. rainfall yeah can think that's often missed out is the fact that it's a coastal city that's also something that's not taken into consideration uh before i ask you jashi i mean uh, did chennai learn any lessons from 2015 i i i want to i mean i i want to uh, ask you about uh, you know your actions uh, because uh, you know when when you have an event like this and and uh, you and i know that we have we have gone through these things uh, quite a few times and and when you have an event like this uh, there's a lot of talk there's a lot of uh, you know uh, uh, throwing uh, you know uh, you know accusing each other etc and, and there is also some action uh, knee jerk ad hoc action immediately after that but then 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 it sort of 
peters down everybody go go about life uh, as 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 they go about life and then uh, you you have an event like this and then you remember 2015 but you and your organization has been working uh, fairly consistently between 2015 um, and today in terms of uh, 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 you know working to uh, uh, rehabilitate tanks working to conserve forest patches uh, you have been working with multiple stakeholders which includes uh, the government the administration people local people uh, and 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 corporates and you know other ngos and activists etc so how how has it been for you uh, uh, to do that number one and number two uh, what do you see as the importance of uh, uh, engagement no engagement is absolutely critical and we need to engage with the range of stakeholders the kind of people that and institutions that you in listed out now that is something that i'm convinced and i'm getting increasingly convinced about the fact that we need to have an open mind when we get into subjects like this or when we try to handle subjects like this what has changed or what has actually happened as a positive post 2015 is there is greater awareness about flooding water logging at the same time the flip side of it is people are really paranoid about water a city which used to welcome monsoons these days even the slightest rain or slightest increase in daily rainfall people are worried people are worried and they say we don't want the water to come in as if there is somebody who can control the flow of water so that's there but on the positive a large number of people are now getting involved in water body re restoration revival working on issues of greening the, the core that was required for the city which was absent or which was completely negligible until 2015 is no longer the case you have a larger number of people getting involved in it and they think that's a very welcome move likewise a lot of uh, agencies that support such initiatives have also shown continued interest it's not that they fund you for a an year and then say goodbye to you they continue to support civil society organizations <laughs> a number of volunteer groups have come up uh, resident welfare organizations that have organized themselves as volunteer groups that has happened and they also seem to get a lot of support from the government on the side of the government i think a lot of good work has been done in south chennai which is not surprising because very often chennai has this kind of a tradition of all the good beginning with the south and slowly percolating to north chennai north chennai continues to be ignored this is what i would say is a summary of what has happened post 2015 Yeah, and South Chennai was also the area where 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 maximum floods happened in 2015. Yes. I mean that's yes. also seems that all that geographically that is the re receptacle or the, you know the plug point for. I mean, if Chennai were, was a sink, then that is the plug point uh, uh, where uh, where where water goes out from. Uh, Very true. So mm -hmm. yeah, so 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 I mean, if action is happening in uh, in Velachery uh, more than what it's happening in uh, Mandapur, Mandavalli, or Mailapur. okay in a way it's justifiable uh, uh that that it's happening there uh so you using lessons were learned uh from 2015 i mean the 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 the, the outlook changed after 2015 i mean if that happened that itself is a major uh, major i mean something major happened in 2015 how has the communication changed post 2015 because 2015 was also when a whole lot of uh, citizen action groups and you know a very innovative communication channels were used to talk about uh, uh, about the flood and the risk etc uh, how did that change and uh, does this have any bearing this year there is a lot of bearing there is a lot of bearing because the early warning systems that are so desperately needed in situations like this is something that's being pioneered by civil society groups in, uh, people who are passionate i, I would call them hobbyists or i mean maybe hobbyist is too to not an appropriate word people who dedicated themselves to weather forecasting and stuff like that they are they are continuing to do their job it, it is not a case where like you know in 2015 something happened and then they stopped with it a lot of people have actually made this a kind of a dedicated passion passion led work and they have continued to keep the citizens informed so those channels are continuing to work on the other hand what i also notice uh, which is a very stark kind of a difference from what we saw in 2015 is the government going way out of its way to communicate to people that's happening big time this time around in fact across all departments communication channels have been kept open and people are aware of what the government is planning and what it is doing and what are the relief measures almost on a regular one hour basis we are getting alerts 
from the government. That's something that has changed. Yeah, that's a major change because I do remember mm -hmm. government was almost absent in in 2015, and <laughs> and also it didn't pay a political price for it. You know, I mean, mm. especially where I was, uh, I mean, where my home in uh, Chennai is, Virgambakam. I mean, it's the same party came back to power. So, I mean, they didn't pay a political price for uh, for the fact that they were absent. You know, I mean, government machinery at a lower level was working, but at the policy level and intermediate level, it was absent in 2015. Uh, Jeshi, you had start. I mean, the Care Trust. I mean, you have a you have a history of making good maps, and you have you have you do mapping work, and you had started an initiative of uh, making flood maps this time, crowdsourced mm -hmm. flood maps this time. I also read that uh, IIT is also doing something like that. So, yes. uh, I mean, is this a joint uh, venture or these are different? And uh, what, what do you plan to achieve uh, with these maps? These are different, actually. Although we do collaborate with IIT Madras, the reason why we decided that we need to look into this is because I have this gut level feeling. I don't have a data backup for this. I have a gut level feeling that newer areas are getting flooded this time around flooded or waterlogged or whatever be the case. So that is why we thought, let's look at what's happening with new areas getting flooded. And secondly, I also want to correlate past interventions, current interventions with flooding, because I'm aware that in a number of parts of the city, a lot of interventions have taken place. I want to see whether those interventions have really contributed to flood mitigation. It is in that sense that we are continuing to do a kind of a crowdsourced map. So you're saying new areas are getting flooded this year. I mean, and, and of course, it will be corroborated by the data you will collect. Yes. yes. Uh, which are the new areas which are getting uh, flooded and why? What, uh, what you have any? No, I have no uh, answers I, to the why. I'm still trying yeah. to look at why. That remains yeah. unanswered. But certain areas, small pockets in Mailapur, Alvarpet, Nungambakam, Tenampet, these are areas that are getting waterlogged or flooded. For instance, the Little Flower Convent, which is right adjacent to the Gemini flyover, and Stella Marie's College have been waterlogged. I mean, a Little Flower Convent actually has been flooded. Now, that's very unusual. We need to see as to why that's happening. I see. Okay. So, I mean, either some drainage channels have uh, have been blocked or maybe some, yeah, or there is a rerouting of floodwaters. Okay, it'll possibly, be interesting to possibly. see. Yeah. It would certainly be interesting. And I also am equally interested in looking at which are the areas that are not getting flooded consistently. Because, I mean, you know my fascination for you know, all these old stories and, uh, you know, novels and stuff like that. So I'm taking the example of why didn't the dog bark and to look at which are the areas and, that are not getting flooded and why. And my own feeling is that it is all those areas that are under some form of protection as reserve forests that are not getting flooded. So I, I would like to see if that be the case or if that is the case. And I also want to look at some of the areas which were designated by the British as very critical areas to see why they remain flood proof. What is the logic behind declaring those areas as flood proof areas? So this is what it's still kind of you know, I'm trying to look at a whole lot of parameters and trying to use citizen data for this. Very interesting, Jashi. I mean, we would we would certainly be interested to uh, know sure. what your conclusions are. Uh, as of, thank you for spending time with us. And uh, I mean, as it's it must be raining outside. I mean, even and you okay. uh, with that you are uh, you spend time talking with us. And um, and take care. Hold tight. And thank uh, you. Hope, yeah, I hope we get through this uh, without too much of loss of uh, property and uh, lives. Uh, thanks, Jashi, once again. Thank you, Gopi. Thank you so much.